Let's go ahead and take a look at the proactive backup options. So we go to automate and we click on proactive backup. We choose our proactive backup script and click edit and then we can click on options. Once we're inside of options we have a couple of different choices. One is the backup every option. Well proactive backup really is goal based and you can tell proactive backup to backup one, a user once a day. I want to back up all my users at least once every 99 days. Or you can tell it to back up users at least once an hour. So by changing it to one, once an hour, then you can have a folder on your network with some critical data and you can have proactive backup grab that folder once every hour to get the changes. We also have this option that says allow early backup. This option has to do with the retrospect client control panel. So when we go to the user's workstation, and we open up the Retrospect Client Control Panel on their workstation, there's a Proactive tab. And inside the Proactive tab, the user can specify as soon as possible. What will happen is, when, during the polling process, the Retrospect software will notice that the user has changed this setting, and then go ahead and make an attempt to back them up, as long as no one else has a higher priority than that user. When the user changes this setting, it doesn't send any kind of signal to the backup server. The backup server has to pull the network and look for this specific machine and identify that the user has changed these options. We'll look at these options again in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and return to the main retrospect program and let's go to more choices inside of our script options and we're going to go to polling. Under polling, the second option here says client connect every five minutes. Retrospect will look every five minutes to see if a user has changed the settings in that Retrospect client control panel. So if we look at the, the client control panel, we have some time settings. This is where uh, we were looking at earlier, but specifically this option is Retrospect going out and polling to see if those settings were changed by the user. The other option is check source every 90 seconds. This is where Retrospect will pull the network to see if a user has plugged into the network or not. So if you've got a laptop that's been away from the office for a week and you return and plug into the network, Proactive Backup is likely to find the machine within 90 seconds to identify whether you need to be backed up again or not. You can increase this value or decrease the value to change the polling frequency. Now Retrospect will not flood your network with packets. It is looking on the network for very specific machines and sending out a very small packet to ask if that machine is out there. The last option that we see is retry uh, failure after 30 minutes. What that means is that if you're backing up a machine and the user restarts the computer in the middle of the backup or they unplug their computer from the network in the middle of the backup, we will wait 30, 30 minutes before attempting to back up that machine again. Now you can increase that value to a much larger number so that you have less frequent polling of failed backups. The next option over here is called client is called client countdown. What happens is when a user is about to get backed up, a dialog box will appear on the workstation's machine asking that user if they want to get backed up now or if they wanted to further back up to a later time. So they actually get a choice of backup now or defer. In addition to that, the user will see a dialog box with the text that appears here. You can type in anything you want as an administrator. As an example, you could type in a message to the users recommending that they close all of their programs because a backup is about to begin. If you want to avoid the user seeing this message at all, you can change this countdown from 20 seconds to 0 seconds and then by setting it to zero the user will get backed up and they will not have a choice of deferring that backup. If the user were to defer a backup you will see an entry in the proactive backup status window that indicates that the backup was deferred. Let's go ahead and take a look at the script options. If we scroll to the bottom of the proactive backup script we can go to schedule and inside schedule the default is always active. We're going to change this to custom schedule. We click on custom and we can specify a range of times. 
So first we can click and drag on the days that we want the schedule to be affected and we can set the start time. So we can say 1600 hours is the start time and maybe the end time is 5 o'clock in the morning. Then we can also set what's called a wrap up time. By setting the wrap up time to 30 minutes what will happen is Retrospect will back up users all night long but 30 minutes before the stop time it will not attempt to back up any new users. It will be able to continue to back up the user it's on until that 5 o'clock time period. Once 5 o'clock hits, all scheduled backups in Proactive are going to stop. But we do give ourselves a 30 minute window by setting 30 minutes so that no one gets started and then stopped very early in that backup process. I can also click and drag the items in the visual representation of the schedule to make manual adjustments if I want. I can also click on Saturday and Sunday and I can have specific schedules for that or I can change the schedules for individual days by clicking. I can set a specific day for always or I can set a specific day to never so that there is never a schedule on that day. Inside Proactive Backup Scheduling we can also set the schedule to never. If I set it to never and click OK and click OK again we can return to the activity monitor go to proactive backup and we'll go ahead and we'll start the proactive backup and what we're going to see is that the script is going to start but it's going to report that the script is actually inactive because the script is not scheduled it's in an inactive state now I can have multiple proactive backup scripts I can have a proactive backup script for my laptops that runs 24 hours a day to, and another proactive script for my desktops that only runs at night and these, those scripts will all interact with each other and appear in this window. The one that's, that's outside of the current time will report as inactive and the one that's currently running will report as active. Other things that we see here in this window is like ASAP. That means that machine needs to be backed up right away. They've got a very high priority but because the script is currently inactive it won't be able to do that. I can also go over here in the proactive backup window and I can view what backup sets exist inside of my different sources, inside of my different scripts. I can also go through and I can view the individual scripts and it indicates that this particular script is currently inactive. And I can select that script, click schedule, and I can change it from to always active. Once I change it to always active, that gives us a little bit more flexibility and it's no longer reporting that it is in an inactive state. So now that the script is active, it's going to begin polling to look and see what machines are available and it found a folder on the local disk and it's going to begin to back up that next. Busy indicates that the script is busy and it's not going to be able to back up any of these users until the execution above it completes. We see times here to indicate when the approximate next backup is. ASAP typically means that it does not know when the next backup is going to be but it, it is going to pull and it's going to try and find that machine on the network to try and back them up next. Other status messages you'll see will be a, st a status message for media. If you see a message that says media, it means the media for that script is currently unavailable and it needs you to insert the correct piece of media. We're going to go ahead and stop the proactive script and when we stop the proactive script we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, a report that's inside of Retrospect. And if we go to Reports and then we go to Backup Report, Retrospect shows us this backup report. And in the backup report it's showing us all of our proactive backup events. If we expand this report and we look at it in detail, it will show us the number of elapsed days since previous backups. So we're going to go ahead and change the view format in the report to show performance data. And click OK and it tells us the number of elapsed days since the previous backup. If it were to report 1, 2, 3, or 4 here, or even a higher number, that would indicate that's the number of days since that source was last backed up. The larger the number in this window, the greater the priority for that individual source. The backup report is very important because all of your proactive backup priorities are really tracked using this report. If the report has been cleared or the report is empty, that can reset all of the priorities inside of your proactive backup script. 
So if we return to the proactive backup script, we're going to go ahead and start it again so we can take a look. And we're going to go to the schedule. And we're going to set it so it's active. And we're going to return to the sources list. And we can see that there are different next backup times and different priorities that appear here. Now, if I go back to the backup report and I clear the backup report and I tell it to clear all, all events, the report will appear empty. When we return to proactive backup, all the priorities are now equal. Everyone is set to ASAP and there's no prior backup times that are listed. Let's go ahead and return to the script. So we go to Automate, Proactive Backup, and we can edit the script. We can also add a second destination to our Proactive Backup script. By adding a second destination, what will happen is Proactive Backup will need to dynamically choose between different destinations. Essentially what that means is that if the goal is to back up a machine at least once every 24 hours, it will first back up everyone to the first destination in that script. The next day, it's going to attempt to back up to the second destination in the script if it's available. So it's a dynamic switch between the first backup set and the second backup set so that you spread your data over multiple sets for maximum safety. Now, if, a specific, if only one of the two destinations is available, because maybe the other media is off-site, it will only use the backup media that's available. But there definitely is a nice flexibility available to you, because with proactive backup and multiple destinations, it's going to dynamically switch back and forth. On the DANCE website in the support knowledge base, you will find a proactive backup FAQ document that goes into a lot of good information about when, when disks will have priority, when backup sets will have priority, so that you can get a better feel for proactive backup. One of the number one rules with proactive backup is that you have to trust it. You have to trust it to do its job and back up all of the machines. Sometimes it's a little bit scary when you see that it's dynamically changing and you wonder, can I trust this backup to do its job and to back up all my machines the way I expect it to? In reality, it will do its job and it's going to be a lot more reliable than a standard backup script that's relying on an alphabetical listing of machines because you know that if you don't have enough time, you're not going to get to the users at the bottom of the list. Proactive backup is going to ensure that you always get to the users at the bottom of the list because the bottom of the list is always changing and moving around dynamically.